Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 36. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to add a menu to the pause screen we added last time. Let's jump in. So I'm just going to open up whoop, not config, uh, pause state. Uh, and let's talk through what we're going to do. So in the last couple of episodes we've written quite a lot of code and maybe gone a bit too quickly and I think that's led to maybe not some mistakes but it's certainly um, I've had to re-record a few episodes uh, a bit too often. So in this episode we're going to go nice and slowly go back to basics, write some good object-oriented code. So let's remind ourselves where we are. In the last episode we added uh, our fancy pause screen, which doesn't do much other than pausing the game. In this episode we're going to start work on adding a menu to our pause screen so the player can choose to do a couple of things, you know, like exit the game, keep going, etc, etc. So the first change we'll make, before we uh, do too much, is we'll change Q to be escape, so we were using Q to activate the pause menu. Let's uh, change it to escape instead. So we currently need to change this in two places, in the pause state and the game state. Uh, and whenever you have to change something in two places, you kind of ask yourself, you know, should this be pulled out to a variable somewhere? And it probably should, but uh, We'll look at that maybe in a future episode. I think every couple of episodes I need to go through and do a bit of a refactoring tidy up episode. Anyway, let's just check escape now works. Yep. Okay, so let's move on to the focus of this episode, which is adding menus. So inside of source logic, we'll add a menu uh, .lua file. And we will write some boilerplate to turn this into a class, or make this file act like a class. Oops. So we want um, where are we? We want a new table or an empty table, which we uh, return. And it would be helpful if we gave it a name. So local menu equals new table. Return menu, and then we'll make our create method. which will be a function and we need an instance of our class to return as well. So our menu will take some options to start with and in a later episode we'll build this out uh, so we can actually do something with those options. But for now we want to keep things to about 20 minutes so we'll just start with uh, some options. And our menu will also draw those options to the screen for the player to choose from. So local draw. We'll just stub out our drawing function. And we need to make sure options is stored on the instance of our menu. And we also need to make sure that our menu has access or the instance of our menu has access to the draw function. And inside of the draw function, we'll just do the bare minimum for the moment to check that it works. So um, we'll need a view, and we'll say view in, I think, in display context should work for us. So this is the view method to draw things in the uh, UI of the game or in the user interface. And then we'll just pass in a function. And for now, we'll just use the love default sort of print method um, and we'll just say it works and let's draw this at 2020. Good. So then inside of our pause state where we want to display the menu the first thing we'll do is require the class that we just made source logic menu And then when we create our pause menu, we'll also create a menu. And we need to give it some options. So options is just going to be a table of options. And just to test it, we'll pass in one, two, three. 
although we don't actually use options at the moment, we always, or hopefully we always draw uh, the words it works to the screen. So now when we draw when we draw the pause state or in the pause states draw method, we will add in a self dot menu draw and we'll pass in the view which is already um, stored on the pause state from last episode. So self dot view should work and we'll see what happens. Excellent. So let's move on and actually draw those options to the screen. So inside of our menu, what we'll do is we'll start by looping through each of those options and drawing them in turn. So we can say for and we'll say index and option in actually this is where we need to use ipairs self dot options. So the way iPairs works is it turns a table into an iterator and an iterator will give us the number of the item that we're iterating through and the item itself. So we want to number all of our items, loop through them and then do something for each item and we need a reference to the number as well because what we will do is we'll say Let's pull out some variables as well to make this super clear. So we'll say all of our menu items should draw at uh, 18 and we'll say the spacing between our menu items should be, let's try 12 and see if that works. Then when we print to the screen we're going to print option, um, the x position and then the spacing times i or times index sorry times the index and let's give this a go great so we have one two and three and just looking at that i think i want to increase the spacing slightly good there we go so now let's deal with selecting things and um, scrolling through our menu so we'll add a new property to our menu class called selected and we'll start with the first item so one always being selected and then in our drawing function we need to uh, do some logic to actually decide how we want to um, whether we want to draw the menu option as being selected or not and to show the player that an option is selected We'll just draw the um, we'll just draw the option in a different color. So we'll say local um, say selected color equals um, and this is just a table of red, green, blue values. So we'll say all of the red, uh, none of the blue, and all of the sorry, none of the green and all of the blue. So we should get a pink color for this. And also, just uh, to make things nice and neat, we'll create a couple of private functions to help us drawing menu items. So we'll say uh, draw option is a function and it really just needs the option and the index. And then we can just take our drawing line from here and add it to here, option index. And we'll also create another private function called draw selected option. And what this needs to do differently is change the color. Oops. And there we go. So to do that, we just call love.graphics.setColor. And we'll set the color to selected color. And the other thing we need to do is uh, turn the color or set the color back to white when we finish drawing so it doesn't affect anything else that we want to draw. So uh, let's also add in a variable for white, which is just 255, 255, 255. Uh, so basically we just max out all of the colors. So we want to set the color 
to white when we finished. Set color white. And then in between the two, we can just reuse our draw option method to print the option to the screen in a different color. Now inside our drawing, we just need to say if um, index is equal to self.selected, then we'll draw a selected option and we'll just pass in the option and the index. Else we will draw, we'll just draw a regular option. So draw option with option and index. Let's see how far we get. Good, so our first item is always selected because we don't have a way of changing the items, so now let's fix that. So on our menu class, we'll add two more functions, one called next, and one called previous. And these functions will just advance or reduce the selected uh, variable. So they need self, oops, self, and for next we'll just say self dot selected equals self dot selected plus one. And we also need to check to see if we've gone too far. So if self dot selected is greater than the number of options, which we can get like that, then we want to set self.selected back to one. So this will just wrap our um, selection around and send it back to the top if the player scrolls off the bottom of our options. And we want to do the opposite for previous. So we'll say self.selected equals self.selected minus one. And what we'll also do is say if self.selected is less than one, then we know they've gone off the top of the list, so we'll set self.selected to be equal to the number of options, and that should send them back down to the bottom. And we need to make sure next and previous are available on our instance, because we want to use them from outside of the class. So instance.next equals next, and instance.previous equals previous. And now inside our pause state in the key pressed function, we can actually use these methods. So if key equals down, then self.menu next. And if key equals up, then self.menu previous. Okay, let's give it a go. Good, and we can now scroll through our menu. So we don't currently have a way of selecting anything in our menu, um, but we'll cover that in the next episode. We'll keep this one nice, short, sharp, and to the point. So thank you very much for watching, and especially if you've been following the series for a while now, we're slowly creeping up on 50 episodes, and I'll try and do something a bit special for the 50th episode. If you do have a couple of seconds free, a like or subscribe does help to show me that you're interested. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.